What's going on guys, it's Omniarch, and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to talk about the iPhone 8, the iPhone 8 Plus, the iPhone 10, uh, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of a rant on some of the opinions that I've been hearing out in the wild, out in the public, uh, and I also want to compare the two phones a little bit maybe near the end and try and kind of get your opinion on which phone is better because I am still rocking the iPhone 6S Plus. Um, I, it's a fantastic phone. I by no means need to upgrade, but there are tons of upgrades in the in the new phones that are really really attractive to me. Um, and the phone's two years old. I'm almost done paying it off, and it's time. I just want to upgrade, and I don't know if I should go for the eight plus or the ten. So I want to talk about that later in the video. What inspired me to make this video actually is the other day I saw a video from Review Tech USA, uh, and as his name suggests, he's a YouTuber who reviews technology on the internet. He talks about smartphones and computers and graphics cards and gaming consoles Nintendo versus Sony whatever um, and he's always talking about not just the technology itself but the industry and the market and the future of technology and stuff like that and I've enjoyed his channel for like two to three years now and even when he has really unpopular opinions I watch his videos and I'm like I totally get where you're coming from uh, I totally get it uh, but he made a video the other day talking about how Apple is really really greedy and how that's gonna be their downfall and this was the first video from him actually in like I said two to three years where I'm just like this guy is literally out of video ideas and he's just complaining for complaining sake uh, because I really couldn't wrap my head around his logic right um, and he talked about a lot of stuff in the video and I'm not gonna be able to cover it all um, but he talked about how Apple is is greedy in that they keep asking for your money for adapters and for all these other um, you know products that other maybe other phones or other uh, companies include in the box right and, the, and one of his biggest ones was the headphone jack and my god it's been a year since apple removed the headphone jack and i don't understand why people are so attached to their headphone jack there is no reason in 2017 why you need a headphone jack unless you are the most pretentious audiophile in the world and you can't stand listening to music at a normal you know quality right if you need to listen to the to your music at the highest quality at all times then maybe you need a headphone jack. But I am willing to bet that 99% of people out in the public are not that demographic, right? And you really do not need a headphone jack. And here's why. Um, wireless headphones have been around for a while now. They're really, really, they've come a long way. They sound amazing. They're really small. They fit in your pocket and they're, in they're incredible, right? I have AirPods. I bought AirPods a couple months ago and I have never once looked back. I have never once been like, oh man, I wish I had wired headphones because they're a huge improvement uh, over over everything, right? And, and you know, one of his points was, oh, all these other phones have been able to do all the same stuff the iPhone's done and they've still kept the headphone jack. What is with the, who cares? Who cares? You shouldn't even be using headphones with a headphone port anyway. You don't need auxiliary headphones anymore. It's 2017. It's the same deal when people were like, oh, look, they they changed the charging port. Like, the Apple just wants your money when they change from the 30 pin to the lightning cable, right? Or when they remove the CD drive for lap from laptops. People are like, well, all the older fucking laptops on the market do the same shit, but they still have a CD drive. And look, it's 2017 and you don't need a fucking disc for your computer. Not once will you need to put a disc in your computer in 2017. There's just no reason for it, right? You do not need it. You don't need it for anything. You don't need it to install pretty much anything, right? So what do you know? Apple was right with that. And look, oh look, the fucking lightning port is way better than the 30 pin connector, isn't it? It's amazing. You can put it in in either direction. It's just a better cable all around, right? Oh wow, look, Apple was right again. Oh look, Apple removed the headphone jack. Let's riot for a year. Why? Why the headphone jack? Dude, we've come so much farther than headphone jacks. Headphone the the 3.5 millimeter port is such an old port. It's such old technology. You don't need it anymore. Like I said, yes, there's this very small niche demographic that might want a headphone jack, right? In which case, you can buy a Samsung. It's fine. I'm not. A, P, Samsung is a fantastic company. They make amazing phones, right? I don't like their soft. I don't like the operating system. That's just my personal opinion. That's why I'll never get one. But, but honestly, you don't need an iPhone then, right? But for everybody else, why are we harping on the on the headphone jack? It's just it blows my mind. Like like people just don't realize that that 
Bluetooth headphones have come such a long way that they're they're smaller and better than your than your regular headphones, right? And and not to mention in the box is the adapter. If you want to use your antiquated piece of shit headphones, you can do that because Apple gives you the adapter for free in the box. Oh, well Omniarch, I want to charge my phone and I want to use my headphones. Like in Review Tech USA's video, he made that a big a big deal. He was like, I'm always charging my phone while using my headphone jack. Uh, well, you should get fucking wireless headphones then, pal, because you look like an Android with your ears connected to your phone and your phone connected to the wall, connected to an adapter, connected to... Why? Why do you have to be plugged into the wall with your headphones that are wired? I just don't understand why people don't want to use wireless headphones. They're just so much better. Like I said, I have never once looked back from these AirPods, and you don't even have to get Apple's AirPods. Fuck it, I don't even care. You can get some cheap ass, no brand, like Bluetooth earbuds that you buy at Five Below, or whatever the case is, spend 20 bucks on a piece of shit pair of Bluetooth headphones, I don't care. No matter what, you will not look back because this, the, them being wireless, you won't get caught on stuff. You can walk away from your phone and still listen to music or still listen to a mu YouTube video. It's just, it's such a, an upgrade. It's, this is the future of listening to music on the go. Why are people resisting it so strongly? I don't understand. Oh, well, you know, I want to use my headphones and I need to buy a fucking adapter now because now there's only one lightning port and now my headphones go into lightning port and how am I supposed to charge the phone? What? Ah! Get an Android then, dude. Get an Android. I don't understand the big deal. If you don't want the future of listening to music, then you're stuck in the past. Get an Android. It doesn't matter, right? That's your that's your other option. Is go with Android, right? And then when they remove the headphone jack, you're gonna be like, oh well, fuck. Now what do I do? And you'll be fucking forced to get Bluetooth headphones because that's just the future of of listening to music. The other thing he was talking about was how some phones on the market, and even phones that cost less than the iPhone, uh, have fast charging enabled, and they come with fast charging capabilities in the box, right? Out of the box, you can use fast charging. And he was saying how, oh, it's bullshit that you have to buy this extra stuff to get this extra feature. Uh, but what I don't understand, right? And this is a this is a huge, and this is even this isn't even towards Review Tech USA. This is just towards everyone in general. People don't understand that Apple is a premium product, right? People flipped their shit when they found out the iPhone 10 was $1,000, which, mind you, is only $200 more than the Plus Model 8. Um, so I don't understand why that's such a surprise to you. But anyway, you know, people forget that Apple is is the premium product on the market, right? Yes, you can go and get another phone with similar features um, or better features for less money, right? It that's just that's up to you. Apple is a premium product, and they're basically a marketing company, right? And I'm not afraid to win with that. Their marketing is incredible and the design of their products is gorgeous. People know when you're holding an iPhone and they know when you're sitting in Starbucks with an Apple computer versus an HP because the, they, the devices just look so much better in my personal opinion. And like I, I would think a lot of people feel the same way uh, because people are willing to pay that extra money for, for just because it's an Apple product, right? So people forget that Apple is a, a premium product because they've kind of made it affordable, right? You know, if you have a carrier financing options or or some other way to get your hands on a really expensive device for an affordable monthly payment people forget that they're paying for a premium product right so if you're spending a thousand dollars right and that's just assuming that you're getting the iPhone 8 plus plus tax you know and maybe you get Apple care on it whatever you're spending a thousand dollars on a phone a phone and you're complaining about a $30 cable to charge it faster or a $60 wireless charging mat like if you don't have the money to have a premium product then purchase a different one it's really simple right it, like people don't buy a, a Mercedes and a BMW and all that stuff and when it comes time to replace the parts they're like well why is it so expensive to replace the parts on my Mercedes when this guy over here has a piece of shit Ford and it costs him you know a third as much blah 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 because you have a premium fucking car. What the fuck? It's a Mercedes. Yes, everything about it's going to be more expensive. Even the shit that shouldn't be more expensive is going to be more expensive just because it's a Mercedes. And people know that and they accept that, right? And and I don't understand why it's so hard for people to accept that fact, that same exact fact, 
for Apple. And like I said, maybe it's just because it's become so easy to get, right? So people forget that it's a premium product. But if you spend a thousand dollars on a phone and you can't spend fifty dollars on a charger and you're butt hurt that a piece of shit phone on the market came with it, buy the piece of shit phone. You'll quickly realize why Apple's better and you'll come right back. And if not, then great news. You just got a great phone for $150. Apple doesn't need your money uh, and you can go elsewhere. I don't understand why people are so butthurt about all these tiny things like, oh, there's no headphone jack or oh, I got to pay for this extra thing, blah, 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 blah. Uh. Great news. You don't have to buy an iPhone, right? Uh, you can go somewhere else. It's fine. Apple has tons of money, they'll do just fine without you, there's a ton of people who really enjoy Apple products, I myself are one of them, uh, and you don't need to buy the new phones, right? So that's just my rant about everyone talking about the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus and 10 and oh it's so expensive and oh I have to buy this stuff and oh my god there's still no headphone jack and blah 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 blah. It's like all this mindless bitching, right? Uh, and and the great news is that you can go and get some other cheap shitty brand phone uh, or you can get a, a, a Galaxy whatever and have it explode in your hand or you can do whatever you want. You can get some other phone on the market. That's fine. Its processor is not going to be as good because the benchmarks for the A11 Bionic are through the roof right now, which is awesome. Um, the go 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 somewhere else if you don't like it, right? And and you'll be back, I'm sure. You'll be back. It might not be for a couple of years, but you'll probably be back. The next thing I want to talk about is the iPhone 8 Plus versus the 10 because I am so genuinely torn between these two phones. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I have an iPhone 6S Plus. It's a great phone. It's so good, in fact, that Apple still sells it in their Apple stores, right? Even though it's a two-year-old model, uh, it's still good. It still runs iOS 11 fantastically. In some cases, even better than the new phones, which I've seen speed tests, which is crazy. But again, it's time for me to upgrade. I want to get a new phone. So I'm thinking, okay, do I go for the 8 Plus or the 10? Um, a couple things. One, right? I love a large screen. That's that's why I went right from the iPhone 5 to the 6s Plus. I didn't even consider the 6 or the 6s. It's just too small. Um, the 5 and SE are jokes to me. I will never go down to something smaller than this because there's no point. Uh, I'm on my phone all the time and my hands are big and I need the larger screen. So I was like, oh my god, the iPhone 10, right? Bigger screen. Fuck yeah, I'm getting that one. And then I did some research and I realized that. The aspect ratio of the of the entire screen is not 16 by 9. So when you're watching videos or you're you know doing anything that is third party, non-native to Apple or wasn't developed specifically for the 10, it's gonna have some bars on the sides that are gonna reduce the screen down to a normal aspect ratio. And in that case, the screen's probably not bigger than the Plus model, or it's about the same, right? But the problem is that it's slightly it's not as wide as this phone and of course it's only by a tiny tiny margin but still I mean it's but still um, so with that with that being the case I'm not sure if I want to spend the extra money on that right I mean if we look at the differences between the 8 plus and the 10 you have portrait mode on the front face and camera the camera is slightly better but really not a big deal um, you also have obviously the full screen is the full front of the device is a screen which is pretty cool but it comes with some quirks right like there's no more home button which you know I talked earlier in this video about holding on to old technology future of technology probably isn't gonna have any buttons so I, I understand that like it'll take some getting used to and I'll just have to get used to it because that's the future of technology I understand that but uh, using face ID is a little bit the, just the idea is a little weird to me uh, and, and that's just coming from a practical standpoint that's not coming from a oh I'm resistant to change thing um, like Here's for here's one example, right? If I want to unlock my phone without looking at it, right? If if I'm like typing or something and I just want to unlock it and then look at it while it's unlocked, I can do that without looking at it. Without touch ID, I have to use my face. So now I have to, you know, kind of stop what I'm doing, look at my phone, and then it unlocks. Assuming that it, it works instantaneously, which I'm sure it probably does, because Apple had to do a lot of testing with face ID before they got rid of the home button. So that's one thing the other thing too is and this sounds this might sound like really conspiracy theorist or whatever right but let's say you get pulled over by the cops and they want to go through your phone without a search warrant they don't even need anything to unlock your phone they can just look at your phone point it at your face and then bam it's unlocked and now they have con they have the uh, ability to look at everything in your phone you know not legally but technically it, oh it, the, the phone's unlocked and then I might, I might you know what I mean like 
I just don't want uh, someone, if they get a hold of my phone, to be able to point it at me and then get access to everything in there. Um, you know, it's a lot harder to force me to touch the sensor. You know what I mean? I, I just, it's uncomfortable to me thinking that uh, somebody else can pick up my phone and point it at me uh, and, and it would unlock, right? So that's another thing where it's like, yes, that's probably the future of technology, but I just don't know if I like it more than Touch ID. Like I said, just the fact that I can unlock my phone without even looking at it for Touch ID is fucking awesome. Um, the other thing too is that without Touch ID, the, the biggest difference is, like I said, the screen size isn't a huge difference because you have 5.5 inches diagonally versus the 5.8 inches, but like I said, when you lower that, um, that aspect ratio down, it's pretty much going to be the same for the entire thing. Um, without the home button, you also have to swipe up from the bottom to go home. Uh, and you have a full swipe or a half swipe or something like that to pull up all your apps. So it's some new gestures that'll take some getting used to. And again, that's fine. That's just the future of technology and getting used to whatever. I, I totally understand that. And I'm sure after a while it'll be okay. I'm, I, I don't, I don't have any qualms with that. I'll get used to it, but, um, it would be nice to continue to use my phone the way that I've been using it for the past two years or more, right? Like just pressing the home button, double pressing it to go to the to my open applications, things like that, uh, instead of learning all these new gestures. And beyond that, right? So we've considered that this, the screen sizes are about the same. In most cases, they'll feel about the same. Um, and we've talked about how Touch ID, in some instances, I feel is better than Face ID. Um, so then it comes down to really the difference in the cameras which is negligible but you do get portrait mode uh, and portrait lighting especially uh with the front facing camera on the 10 which is cool you also get an emojis which is also kind of cool is that a reason to spend an extra couple hundred dollars i don't know beyond that uh there is the oled screen and i think the screen on the 10 is going to look so much better than the 8 plus and that just makes me really sad because that's the only thing that's really holding me back like yeah and emojis would be cool and the device looks cool uh, but there's a couple drawbacks like I said there's no touch ID and there's no stuff like that um, but is it really worth spending the extra money just for an OLED screen like do I want the screen to look that good for that extra money I don't know and that seems like the only draw to me is that do I want a nicer screen and am I willing to pay for it? And and that's the biggest thing. And I, I just, I'm so torn. Like, do I want to be practical and just go for the eight plus because it can do everything else, right? Really, really well. It's got the new chip, everything like that. Um, and it's still going to be a huge upgrade from the six S plus, but, um, Am I willing to pay for that extra that that extra screen and all and all that stuff? So I'm not sure, and and I'm really torn. And I'm like, some days I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna get the 10, fuck it. And other days I'm like, well, I could just get the 8 Plus today, and I'll have a brand new phone and have all these features. And yeah, maybe I'll miss out on um, you know uh, portrait lighting or or whatever or the OLED screen. But you know, is it that big of a deal? I don't know. And I think. That's the biggest thing is is they should have probably put out demo units for the iPhone 10 just everywhere. Right when the 8 came out, people should have been able to play with the 10 in store because you already know that they, they announced it at the same time, right? So people got to play with them at the same time when you if you went to the uh, launch event in fucking uh, Cupertino or whatever. Um, so it's like I don't know if you wanted to wait like I get it like maybe it takes some maybe you needed an extra month to produce enough phones right that's fine but I want to still play with it and decide which one's better because maybe your iPhone 8 plus sales would have been better if you let people play with the 10 and they're like oh it's not really that worth it or maybe people would have been like way more hyped for the 10 because they can go into their local Best Buy or whatever and be like holy fuck this thing is way cooler than I thought so I don't know that's my biggest gripe is that nobody not not that many people and certainly not your average consumer can just go out and play with the 10 and see if they want to buy it right so that's why we're in this weird period where it's just like really frustrating because we're still a month away from the pre-orders for the 10. Um, oh, not really a month. We're what, 20 days away or something like that. So yeah, we're a month away from launch still, which is really, really frustrating. So I don't know. Those are just my opinions on Apple and the iPhone 8 plus versus the 10. And I wanted to know what you guys thought down below in the comment section below. Like I said, 
let me know your opinions do you not even give a shit about apple what what's your what's your deal i would love to hear you guys down there make sure if you enjoyed the video smack a like on it if you hated it smack a dislike i really don't care either way is fine with me make sure you subscribe with notifications on and also before i go i just want to let you guys know a couple videos ago i mentioned that i joined illicit gaming and i am still in illicit gaming uh, and if you guys want to see more videos from me make sure you go over to the illicit gaming channel and follow or subscribe to their channel because i at this point have three videos up there that if you guys want to see more of my content and you haven't seen those three videos you're missing out by not being subbed over there so make sure you go sub over to the illicit gaming channel go to their twitter uh, and follow them on twitter with notifications on so you will know when i upload because they always tweet it out and i retweet it and stuff like that um, so you'll be able to see even more on content content if you are following following illicit gaming So I just wanted to throw that in there in case you guys missed that video or you didn't know that I was uploading to their channel every week So yeah, if you want to see more Omni Arc videos check out illicit gaming every week I upload at least once it's usually on Friday, uh, and that's a bit of guys. So thank you so much for watching this is Omni Arc. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Peace